Hey everybody, it's me, Little Frenchie, and today we are going to do this landscape painting. Actually, I painted this first and now I'm doing the intro. Ooh, doing it backwards. But I've painted, this is my fifth time painting this painting. And this time I did a little bit of different colors simply because I've had a lot of people tell me that they did not have this paint, this color. Um, it's a little bit more of a difficult color to find and so um, I decided to do it with a pretty standard color of the burnt umber. This is a great color to use. Um, it's pretty standard. Almost all paint sets have it and so this is the one that I just painted and I just wanted to let you know what you needed for this lovely landscape painting. Of course, we need a four by six, but if you want to make it bigger, that always works too. Five by seven, anything bigger, you're going to need to use bigger brushes than what I'm using in the video, and that's okay. You're going to have to use a little bit more paint, a little bit more water, but that's okay. So the brushes I used, my standard favorite, size eight, and it's size four, rounded brushes, my favorite. I, these are just the standby. I think if you're going to buy brushes, these are two to buy. You can do a lot with these two. This is for more finer detail. This is just do a wash. I tend to do smaller paintings just because I'm trying to um, be um, get more paintings out of my paper, and I like the minis, the big ones. You do a lot of washing. It's a little bit more time consuming, and these are um, a lot quicker. So the colors I use in this painting, I only use three colors in this painting to get this effect. Three colors, and New Gamboge, Daniel Smith. This time I'm trying the Windsor and Newton Ultramarine, not the French Ultramarine, and I like it. I think it does pretty well. And then I also use the Windsor and Newton Burnt Umber. I've decided to try those um, in that brand. I like them. Of course, I'm going to tell you Daniel Smith is my absolute favorite. Um, just can't beat that one. But on a budget, Windsor and Newton is a good way to go. So those are the three colors. So let's get started painting and you'll see how we do it. See you on the other end. Alright everybody, I'm back and I'm about to do this landscape painting for you. As you saw earlier, I did this landscape painting four times. Each time it came out a little bit different. There's things that I like about each of them, but I'm going to try to incorporate it into all of them as I show you how to paint this landscape painting. I just want you to know that all the colors that I will be using is it will be in the description. Um, I have had comments where people said, I don't have this color what I did when I was first started painting and didn't have the exact colors that the uh, people were using is I just improvised. So I tried to find a color similar. So if they're talking about browns or blues or reds or yellows, it's okay to do different colors in that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to sketch out a rough um, drawing of where we're going to place anything. And as you can see in here, we're almost a third down where we're starting where the water and the land ends. And I'm just going to put a really light line across here and then I'm going to draw my boulders in um, just however I want. As you can see I have some in the back, some in the front, and I'm just doing a real rough estimate of where I want them. And then I'm also going to go in there and put where I want my, my trees at. So I kind of have a rough idea of how high I want them, where I want them. And this just helps guide you as you go through. Just remember, um, as you're drawing, that nature is fun to draw because it's not exact. And you can have fun, and you know, if you're looking at a landscape in real life, just know that you don't have to be exact while you're painting this. And it'll still be beautiful. And I'm going to go through and do the mountains. And... I'm gonna, that's my rough mountains that I'm gonna do. As you can see, I didn't do it quite as rocky this time and that's because I just felt like doing it that way. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna take my number eight brush, which I'm probably gonna use most of this until I do the um, trees, is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna wet the, uh, the sky. And you don't want it too soupy. As you can see, mine's a little bit soupy, so I'm just going to try to spread it out as much as I can. And I don't know if you could see this, but unfortunately I didn't clean my brush very well from the last time I used it because I can see a very light purple on it. And uh, sometimes I'm not the best at that. <laughs> so I'm going to go in, and then I'm going to take some French Ultramarine Blue. And I'm gonna take just a little bit, and I 
really can't see what I'm doing. I'm putting some water in here. And then I'm just going to go in and dab like there's clouds. And I'm just dabbing my blue in and I'm leaving blank spaces. So I'm dabbing my blue and I'm re-picking up, putting more color on my brush and I'm just going through and kind of working around these clouds that I feel that are in the sky. And as you see, I got a little bit too much color on my brush and that's okay. You can always spread it out. I'm just going to do my clouds and they're just going to be real light. As the, this dries, this blue will fade lighter. And that's kind of what watercolor does. If you want it to be darker, you need to um, let it dry and then go in again. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to wet my brush and just do the water down here. And get it wet. And then I'm going to take some more of my French Ultramarine Blue. And with this one, I'm not going to dab. I'm going to do stripes like drag it across every time I add color just because this is the water and that's how water is it kind of has that rippling effect so to give that feel of water I'm just gonna go back and forth with the color we're eventually going and do wet again later on now one of the colors that I use um, might or might not be a little bit more difficult to uh, obtain so this time around I'm going to try not such a this like burnt orange I think you could do like maybe a burnt sienna or something like that um, but this color is a little bit more difficult to find I guess and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my um, my natural brown that I have which is a burnt umber it's a little bit more on the um, I want to say cool side where this is a warm more warm and yellow red this is more like a a darker sort of brown and I've gotten a uh, Windsor and Newton one to refill so we'll see how it works when I mix it up so as I'm waiting for that to dry I'm gonna go ahead and put some water in the pan here you can see that and I'm gonna take some of my French ultramarine blue and stick it in there now remember as I said in other videos that as you go along that you want to make sure that you use the same blues or same yellows or same reds as you mix your colors that will help it make it be more cohesive when you're doing your painting you don't want to use 15 blues and you know five yellows and also your painting looks just like it's just too much and you can't see it I'm gonna over just a smidgen but I'm gonna take my um, my burnt umber over here and I'm gonna pick it up and mix it with with the blue now you see it's better to make your um your own grays and and um browns than to actually buy them it's they're really simple to make as you can see you make it really easy and you can make it so now I put too much brown in there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and take a little bit more blue and and that's how you change the uh, values of your, you get a cool or a warm sort of gray. And that's what I'm going to be using at this time to do my um, mountains over here. As you can see, I'm still waiting for this to all dry. And um, as I let it dry, I'm going to go in and see how it's starting to dry here. You can kind of see how it's pushing the color really detailed right there. That's how you can tell. And now when I do these these boulders I'm gonna go in and just do my um, burnt umber in there instead of my brighter my, my brighter orangish sort of brown over here I'm gonna I'm gonna um, pause the video and I'm going to uh, dry this so you don't have to watch paint dry all right I'm back and that didn't even take me very long to dry so I'm gonna go in here and wet the mountains and I didn't wash off my brush too much and that's because I wanted to have just a little bit of color in here and I'm gonna pick up a little bit more water and I'm not gonna go all the way down because I want that faded effect where it looks like um, you can see like it's almost misty or foggy in, in the background behind the trees so I'm not gonna go down all the way 
and I might just take some clean water and put it on here so the paint will follow it sort of say um, going in and I'm also not going all the way to the boulders is because I want to paint them in and not wait for paint to dry and so I'm gonna get as close as I can and that's all the space here that I'm not painting is going to be covered up by trees anyway, so it's not really going to matter if I get all the way in. So I'm going to go in, clean my brush, I'm going to take some of that burnt umber, and we're going to, what I'm doing as I'm doing the mountains and the boulders is I'm going in and I'm slowly going to layer the colors on there to get it the shadowing effect. As you can see over here and down here I wanted to be able to see that shadowing now as you each of my paintings I like a little something different about all of them like this one I like the shadowing of the boulders here I like the boulder placement better same with the mountains I kind of like the mountains better in here and this one I just dabbed a tiny bit of red in there as it was drying to give it that that effect so as I, as I go through and um, do mine we'll just see how it turns out I'm going to go in here. Oh, I got way too much on there. I'm going to rinse off my brush. And then I'm just going to push it along. And you can see it's not quite as that orange, orange tinge. And so I'm just going to do this light layering over here. And I can still kind of see where my lines are, where, where the boulders, each of the boulders are. I'm just gonna put it in here. So now that we have the boulders, we have this reflection. This is water, and water always reflects. So I'm gonna go in and kind of do an estimate of each of the shapes in the water, and I'm just doing that stripey line again, just because that's how water is. And just doing a tiny bit of brown, so I don't wanna do too, see, I grabbed too much, but we'll, we'll push it out to make it as you can see, we're putting the brown, uh, or I'm putting the brown in the water. Now I'm gonna, and you don't really need to rinse off your brush since you're using the same brown and blues here with the gray. I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna, a little bit of, and I'm gonna go in and kind of shadow. like going along and shadowing. I live in the Pacific Northwest and out here we just have mountains galore. It's beautiful here especially on a clear day where you can see them. Now, as I'm going down I'm kind of dabbing like dot 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 as I'm going down to help show the shadowing as it goes down. Now as you can see my lines are here so this is gonna be covered up by trees but this will help give it a little bit of texture in your painting because you don't want it to be all flat and you can even see as it's starting to dry the different um, the pigment is stronger in some places versus the other and as I do that I'm gonna go in and grab some more of my my uh, burnt umber and just do a putting a little bit over here so I can kind of see and you can if you want to put water in here and then add some of your color and how you make your colors weaker or stronger as you add more water to them now when I when I did these um, as you can see as I did my boulders here I just kind of went in and went just it's still too wet and I kind of just went in and added a little bit of darker around see behind this boulder right see the lights coming in and the top of the boulders here is where it's going to be darker because of the shadowing this one's behind this one this one's kind of lower this one's behind and we're gonna let it let it dry and as it gets I'm, as we add more and more layers, you'll start to see the shadowing a little bit better. I'm going to go in over here. Oops. I'm going to... And see, as it's still wet, it kind of spreads. 
which is I like that effect. If you want it to be more distinct, you put it on um, after each layer dries. So as you can see down here, it's more distinct. Up here, as I'm putting on while it's still wet, it's it blurs because of the water that's still on there. Mountains have always been pretty peaceful to me. I love looking at them and seeing them outside and um, I love when I, on a clear day when I can see the mountains and large mountains, just incredibly beautiful um, out here. And they make me happy every time I see them. I also love the water. You can see it starting to give a little bit more texture. And if, you know, I'm not totally, I can go in here with water, do this and kind of smooth it out if I feel like I'm not the liking the way it's going. And then after that, I'm going to go in and add one more layer after it's completely dry. You're just going to have to listen to me do the hair dryer because I just can't keep pausing and unpausing the video. You'll see it only takes a few seconds to dry. Um, it's pretty quick. These are pretty handy. Make sure you use your coupon at Joann's or Michael's to get these. They're worth having if you're trying to you know, do projects like this, especially if you don't have patience. Sometimes I feel like I don't have very strong patience. As you can see, as I'm drying it, the paper starts to go back down. I don't know if you can see that there in the video, but I can see it as I'm doing it. The, it starts to actually unbubble a bit. Over here. Now you don't want to leave your um, dryer on here too long because it can burn your paper and that's <laughs> never something you want to happen while you're painting. So I'm going to go in and take some more of my um, burnt umber. I'm going to go in and do some more shadowing. And this is where um, I might take out my number four brush to help here. Do some of this shadowing in here has it's a little bit finer detail having it go through now as you see as I'm doing the shadowing on the boulders that I'm not necessarily doing it um, in the water because the water as you know doesn't show as much reflection in detail as uh, um, when it's in the reflection and I'm gonna go up in here and add a, a little bit of more color, mainly on the very tip top. Am I gonna put the, the color to kind of give it that depth? And as you can see, I'm layering it. Um, the, the dark on the very top versus more the bottom, because when you're looking at something from far away, that's kind of how it goes. You can see it darker. And I'm just gonna do and yours doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Um, it'll be hard. As you see, if you come to my Facebook page and see how I posted all of these, um, you'll see I tried to do this painting like four times. And each time it was completely different. I mean, just completely, completely different. And so um, as you work on this and do this yourself, you'll it's hard to do exactly what somebody else is painting. And so... Just do what you feel like looks good. And it doesn't have to be the exact as as the teacher. And, and it shouldn't. It should be your own art and how you're feeling and what you're feeling on your art. I'm going to take a little bit of this gray and mix it a tiny bit with my, my brown under here. And I'm going to shadow one more time. So just add a little bit so it's still brown but not. And it's, and it's, and it's still wet. Now the reason I picked that bright orangey color is because it kind of shows more against the blue. And and if you have it, you use use the color that you you'd like. 
feel like it's just so light on here. And I might, I think I'm just going to go in here and just do it darker. I want to, there we go. I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a little bit of gray in there. I'm going to dry it one more time. I'm going to do this gray in here. And now, you know, rocks aren't exactly smooth unless you got river stones. So it's okay if you feel like yours isn't exactly smooth or your shadowing isn't smooth. It's totally all right. I'm going to go in here and make my green and I'm going to go back to my number eight brush, put a bunch of water in here. And I love new gamboge. I mean, you can get any sort of, mine is a little bit dirty from painting before. Um, but I'm going to grab some of my new gamboge and put it in here. Grab some more. I'm going to take some of that stuff in there. This is a, this is a warm yellow. So use whatever you have. Cool yellow will make it a little bit more different and that's okay if you don't have the warm yellow and you have a cool yellow. French ultramarine, take some of that. Mix it up in here. And I'm gonna start off with a lighter, a lighter green and then we'll add some more as we go through to make it darker. Now, oh, my I want my uh, green to be a little bit more on the blue side. There we go. That's the kind of green I like. Now I'm gonna go in and put in my trees. So like I see the lines where I drew them and some of them are a little bit higher than others and we're just gonna go in and this is the Bob Ross coming out. <laughs> but you're gonna, you're gonna dab and the way the trees grow, I'm gonna show you on this one. You're gonna do the first dab and then you're gonna kinda have it go up and you're gonna go back and forth up back and forth and I like tapping tapping works makes your hand not so heavy when you're when you're doing the tree and then it kind of spreads out towards the bottom because that's where it's thicker and you can go in and we're just gonna tap in all these trees do you see how I kind of make the branches go up because most trees, not all of them, a lot of them grow up towards the sun. We're just gonna go through and put a tree here, a tree there, kind of like Bob Ross. And you know, he had a flair for painting, so he knew what he was talking about. And you see the heavier the, the pigment is, the darker it is, and Oops, splattered and that's okay that's just a branch that is hanging over the boulder that's what I'll tell myself we just go through back and forth back and forth and I want to put another one here oh that's an awful one we'll highlight it later with some more colors to give it a little bit more depth and I'm just gonna go through and dab in all the colors and I'm gonna want one right over that comes through right here so I'm gonna make sure I, I put it there that gray must not be all the way dry you see that one's in front of the boulder The one that's over here that you can't really see, but it's kind of framing the painting. It's because it makes your eye move as you're as you're doing it. Got another tree that I drew in over here that I liked, and a little 
maybe one over here. It's like a bush. It's like, hey. We'll put one right here. And then we're going to put some more green in here closer to the boulders. All right, here's the fun part. You're going to take some water and just pick up a little bit. And then you're going to kind of go in and go back and forth of where each of these trees you think they are in the water. Remember, water or reflects things differently. And if it's moving water, you're, it's not going to be exact. And so just remember that as you're going through. And if you grab too much paint, remember you can erase it or you can pick it up paint and then move it along so like might be a little much and when I'm done here with the green I'm gonna go back in later on as it's drying and do another another layer of um, blue to kind of make it more watery just going in And you can see the trees are kind of coming in and you can just do those little slashes of green. I feel like this one is just too much. I use too much. When you have that, just get some clear water. Just go in there and lift it up. Just lift it up and now it's not too thick. And that's kind of, that's the nice thing is when you're painting in water and you screw up, you just put more water in there and hey, the water is pushing the color out. And I kind of like how I picked up some of the blue and threw that in there and you can kind of see how it changes as you as you do it. I want to go in here and make a deep a deeper a deeper color to kind of highlight some of this. I might have to use the hair drag again. I'm sorry, folks. I, I know you just don't. I don't know about you, but I I don't think you want to watch my paint dry. A lot of times when I do these quick little paintings at lunch, I take a half an hour. I get an hour lunch and I take a half an hour of it and um paint and sometimes I don't get completely done so I because I can't I don't have a dryer at work and um, I finish the, the more finer detail the next day and then I start another painting all right so I'm gonna come in here and dry this. Remember I told you I get my, my painter's tape from the dollar store? You can see with the heat, it lifts it up off the painting. And um, when you get more um, more expensive paint, it doesn't do that when you hold your paintings down. But because I'm, you know, you know, just trying to make it work, I want to go in here and paint a little bit more. In the, just a little bit more highlighting in the mountains, a little bit more darker color. I'm going in. It's my friend today. Um, it's going on a hike and you were chatting and he showed me pictures of him on one of his hikes with all the mountains and oh sorry I live on a busy road. Um, beautiful. It's beautiful. I was asking if he was trying to inspire me <laughs> to paint something. <laughs> And he's showing me all the flowers in the mountains. It was quite amazing. All right, so I've got this green in here. I'm gonna put a little bit of more a blue in there. And, and you can see it's still kind of a green. And then I'm going to clean off my brush and lift up a, a, just a little bit of the brown. You see it, the brown on here? Add this, and it'll make it a darker green without making it look gray, that yellow. And then this is where we're going to go in and put in put in the details in some of these trees. So like, that one's still a little bit wet. But we're going to go in and just kind of, you know, it doesn't have to be exact. You can go underneath. Remember the light shining from up above. 
probably like a nice morning and if you want you can put a little line in here to help guide you as you're going through that way you don't have to put in all the trunks or anything like that with watercolor it's more of an illusion than the actual um, exactness and that's kind of why I like watercolor you can get more exact with watercolor but it's gonna take a lot more than just 30 minutes or an hour to do that just add a little bit. I'm going to put it darker closer to the boulders just because of the shadowing again. And I am I really like the bright over here, but this is to show you. And I'm going to go in and take some more brown and do, try to do some more shadowing over here with my, uh, my boulders. I'm gonna tap on it because it's not quite smooth and kind of just a little bit of a little bit of clear water so it blends up a little bit more. It's not so harsh. And my last touch here, I like that much better. It shows the boulders much better. So I'm gonna take some of my blue again and put a little bit more water in there. And I want it to be real light, so I'm just at seeing. And we're going to go in here and just do lines back and forth, very like a feather touch. So back and forth. So you can see the effects of the water. And there you have it. There's your landscape painting. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you want to see more of them, subscribe and like it and tell me what is it that you would like to see. Um, I would, I'm willing to try anything. I can't see him the best at painting, but I will try to help you paint what you think you'd like to paint. So also check out my Facebook page and let me know how you're feeling. I'd also love to see any of the pieces that you're doing. I love seeing other people's arts. I appreciate it. I love it. And, um, I'm a big fan of seeing what other people do at all different levels, whether it's just beginning or super advanced and experienced. I want to see what it is that you're working on. And as I'm talking to you, I'm not, I can't stop playing. So I'm just going to have this go all the way down. You see this? So it's just kind of misting all the way down. And I feel like I need to do just a little bit of more dots in here for the mountains. Yeah, as you can see, I'm playing. But remember, do what you like. It's always better to stop and take a break from your paintings and to keep going and then messing them up. I found that I tend to do that. I like to play. I want to keep playing, keep playing, keep playing. And then I'm like, ooh, I played too much. So also, if you're frustrated with one of your paintings, and you're not exactly enjoying the way it looks, another good thing to do is take a break from it. And... You might eventually like it again once you walk away from it for like a day or a few hours. I like to go back to, to it the next day and see how it is and then if I'm, how I'm feeling. <laughs> As you can see, I'm going in here and I'm playing just a, a little bit more, adding a little bit more color to over here to, to it. All right, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you can make a landscape painting. Um, and thank you for watching it. Have a great day and happy painting.